because this is a vortex. They don't know. Mm -hmm. And here it is. This is a real heart. Right off the internet. <laughs> Another one. Look at this. These are cat scans. You know what I mean? And they put you through the big tunnel of all the stuff going on. Anyway, it shows you where this is. Now, you're going to wonder, well, how did he get that hole there? Does anybody know how he got that hole? Oh, it is spinning. <laughs> I didn't put the hole there. This is not coming from me. This is coming off the work. So if you work, okay, things can come to you. You don't have to use, uh, you know, uh, any kind of, uh, you know, what sentimentality is this heart. The heart can be studied objectively. All right, so here we go. As you saw, look at those black lines. I studied every one of those lines, and I found out that they indicate the form on the inside of the heart. Well, here it is again. It's, it's gorgeous. I mean, it's just... And, and to have the machine running, and to see this, and to feel it, it's just unbelievable. Just right now, it's chilled up and down my back just by looking at this picture, because I know this machine, the machine is you know, big. Alright, so you saw the model that I made. There's the bottom of it. The same thing going on in the bottom. Mm. The same thing. They're all centered. They're two vortexes moving in different directions. <laughs> to write all the medical. Okay, so now, here's what I found. I found that the form is, is a transformation <coughs> in a cube. And this is a whole new way to study forms now. That's never been done before because it's based on spirals. All the platonic forms throughout the history of 6,000 years of study, they never spun anything inside anything else. They just leave it inside. They well the corners touch a face. Oh, that's cool. Okay, so this is, this is the thing here that I did, the actual one I did. And it's, you know, I always kind of take a chance by lifting this up, but I always seem to get it. Oh, well, this guy kind of came loose, so maybe somebody can put that underneath there for me. And then it'll kind of help me get it clipped back in. Well, there. Oh, well, there you go. Thank you. And you can see that I objectively study it. This is some guesswork. So I have gone from this corner to that corner, 60 degrees. It's got 60 degrees of spin. And I divide every cube into 16 squares, and every time I come down, I go in the middle of the square, the end of the square, the middle of the square, to the middle of the whole face. Okay. So from the middle, the end is here, and here's the, here's the very middle. The heart's here. It's right between the two transformations. So the heart form is an interval based on seven that comes about through two extremes, from the middle to the edge. What happens is that at this point in the middle, it turns into an octahedron. Now the octahedron is air, and the tetrahedron is warmth. So the heart is between warmth and air. It's between warmth ether and light ether. And it sits in one of the lungs in the heart. So it's based on air and warmth because the heart is a warm organ. So the geometry is starting to explain what you hear all the time. What happens at this point, as it continues to turn, is contracted as small as it can get here, then it goes back to the tetrahedron. That's amazing. You go from tetrahedron to an octahedron to a tetrahedron. Nobody has ever done that by spinning. And now it's time to do it, you guys. It's time to start doing this. I don't have time to do all this. Now what I did was, is I realized that this form right here, I, I could put that back in here. And I did. Well, here it is. This is the one that's down here. And this is the one we started with. Follow me? I took this one and put it back in here. Time to get in here. And if it's lawful, if this is a fantasy, it should fit. And it does, if it's perfect. Then I took this and put it back into the cube and twisted it again until it got here. 
And in that process, I found the form in the middle of a heart. So that is, let's see a good example. Here it is here. That is what is the middle part of the seven-sided form. So let's see if I can catch this up here. Let's show you more on the rotation of the cube. And you see, I can explain all of this without this computer. But I use the computer because uh, it, I don't have to put so much in my suitcase. <laughs> but at the same time, okay, uh, it helps me to show you things I can't show you quick enough. So here it is in a cube. And you can see how it turns. You can see how it lawfully is flowing across to one corner or the other. Now, and then here it is, all together, like I just showed you. Frank, can you move the model? Can you move the model? Oh, sure. Sorry. Can you move it over here? Oh. Yeah, I can move it. No problem. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you see, you see the idea? You see how to do this? You can see how you guys can take either your students or yourself and go home and do this. You can start spinning things inside other things. Okay, so I'll remove it. Pretty cool, huh? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I, I take this to the Gertianum and the mathematicians there, they want to see this. So they hire a big film crew to come in. I don't know how much they spent, but they spent some money to cameras all over the place. So I'm showing this uh, to them, and uh, just like I did to you, and then um, I'm explaining basically how the seven-sided form, where it is, and uh, how it transforms, uh, because they were very interested in the lecture I gave, like this one. So um, let's see if we get to the other end. Uh, you see how this is pinching together? Very interested person. And then, um, anyway, I'm talking to the other mathematician, Oliver Conrad, and he's very interested too. So I'm showing them where they are, okay, and how they're spinning. And uh, anyway, so let's see if I can get going here. All right, this is the kind of work I do. These are transformations, and what I found out was that. One of the mathematicians told me that if I could find the form that goes around the seven-sided form, which is called a dual, uh, that this would help the heart during the time we leave our body and come back in the morning, would help to reconstruct the forces for the next morning. This would be the shape that goes around the heart. Okay, and since it's a dual, you usually have if you have six, that means you have twelve. It's a dual. Well, I. They said it would be 14. Well, it turned out to be 13. And that's it there, a little gold one right here. That is the form that goes around the geometric design of the heart. At night, it will help. And I already have one doctor working with this form. And of course, these are also other transformations that I've done. So, to make sure that this form is lawful, and remember, we have to work lawfully now. Can't, you can't just guess at stuff anymore. We have to keep our research lawful. Okay, so to make sure, I found out that I could put the seven-sided form in this 13-sided form. First 13-sided form ever. And it fits all the points and so forth. Now to make sure that this form should go inside that one. And it does. Now you know that it's lawful. It's not guesswork. It works. Okay. So, uh, once, let's see, I had, oh, this guy again. What did I do? I must have pushed the wrong button. Oh, here's what I showed you before. Okay. And how they go in. So you kind of back up what, I'm, what I told you with the, with the computer. So anyway, this is what happens when I spun them both together. I got a shape, which is red on the inside, which is this one, and the seven-sided form on the outside. So what I want to show you is 